Hello everyone, my name is Jared Hutchins and I'm an assistant professor at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign in the Department of Agricultural and Consumer Economics. Using data from the USDA, today we're going to look at how U.S. milk supply has been evolving over the past two decades across the top 15 dairy producing states in the country. In our dairy sector, there really are two different types of states, which I will call modern and traditional states, which are evolving in very different ways. As you can see from this map, the most obvious distinguishing factor in these types of states is geography. Modern dairy states are out west and the traditional dairy states are in the Midwest and Northeast. Other distinguishing factors are history and how big their operations are. Traditional dairy states have a much longer history in dairy, hence the name traditional, and their herd sizes are usually less than 250 cows. In contrast, the modern dairy states are more recent entries into the sector, and their average herd size tends to be well over 1,000. In this presentation, the only real distinction I've drawn is whether the state has an average herd size below or above 500 head. I've chosen these 15 states because they are the top 15 states in terms of dairy cow numbers. For these states, I'm going to be breaking down both total production and average herd size in terms of its base components, which are milk yield, number of cows, and number of farms. The first observation we can make looking at total production is that traditional and modern dairy states are actually producing about the same amount of production and growth. However, they are doing it in very different ways. First, let's look at cow numbers. Traditional dairy states have barely added any cows since 2008, but modern dairy states added cows at a quick rate since 2000. After 2008, the rate of cow growth in modern dairy states has gone down and even started to slightly stagnate in the past two years. Now let's look at the other way to grow production, milk yield, measured in pounds of milk per cow. Dairy farms can grow yield by investing in better technology, adopting better management practices, and using genetics with higher milk yield. Modern dairy states have a higher milk yield than traditional dairy states, but starting in 2012, we're actually seeing traditional dairy states close this gap. If we normalize both trends to their 2010 level, we can see that milk yield in traditional dairy states has started to catch up in 2012. This is interesting because starting in 2010, we've also seen large improvements in dairy genetics thanks to the introduction of genomic testing. Finally, let's look at average herd size. Once again, I've normalized herd size to the 2003 level so we can compare the two regions on the same graph. Beginning in 2014, we see that average herd size has started growing faster in traditional dairy states. Since we know they are not adding cows, we know that herd size has to be driven by a decline in the number of dairy farms. In fact, from 2014 to 2020, the number of operations in traditional dairy states has gone down 37%, compared to 26% in modern dairy states. So what's the future of U.S. dairy production look like? Well, one question we might ask is whether we are reaching a long-term stable number of dairy cows in the country. We've seen both production and cow numbers slightly stagnate in the last two years, but it remains to be seen if this will continue. Some issues that the dairy sector needs to confront are environmental regulation and zoning that may limit expansion as well as worries about the resiliency of the supply chain. These kinds of factors may lead to these states deciding to no longer grow production by adding cows. If we've reached that long-term level, we may see modern dairy states start following the example of traditional dairy states and focus on growing yield to expand production instead of cow numbers.